Welcome back fellow 3D print designers. Today we are going to be talking about the build modifier. Let's get into it. So let's go ahead and start a new project. We'll go file new general. So we are in Blender 2.91 and just do general and let's go ahead and save this as build. We can just call it build and I'm going to switch into EV mode. And let's go ahead and add the build modifier. Here we go. Boink! There we go. We're done. We've built it. Just kidding. It looks like it's disappeared, but really what's happening is it's kind of like an animation. So it's going to start on frame zero or one and go to frame 100. And so if we hit play down here at the bottom, so just hit play. And there we go. Now it is being built. Suzanne is being built and it's just going to loop through that. Um, you can actually turn your in frame, just type in 100, and it will just sit there and loop and build. And you may ask, what in the world? Why would I ever use this for 3D print design? And that's what I've been asking myself. But I have found a few ways that you can use this for 3D print design, and I'm open for any other thoughts, but uh, let's go ahead and dive into you know, how and why we would ever use this. So one way that you could use this is to... Um, kind of animate your parts of your design. Say if you had a, a part that you were designing that had multiple pieces, you could have it animate together for a client. Or another way you could use the build tool is starting it from the bottom of your print and animating it from the bottom to the top, almost to emulate like what a 3D printer would do. Um, it's only going to do it based off the faces. As you can see, the faces are the only thing that are uh, being uh, compiled here and another way you could use the build modifier is to simply just pause the build wherever you want uh, say somewhere in there and you could apply it and that would kind of lock in that geometry or let's kind of keep going a little bit further maybe you want to stop somewhere in here not sure why you would ever want to do that but you may want to but let's go ahead and kind of get dive a little bit deeper into this. So one thing you can do, if we just let it kind of play out, you can click this box and reverse it. So if you want the first frame to be the full Suzanne, like here, and then it will slowly, you know, decompose your, your design there. Um, or you can randomize it, and now it's just going to do this really weird and funky effect. I'm not sure why you would want that, uh, but maybe you do. So say if you wanted to make a, a design that was kind of very you know cracked and broken looking you could do something like that you could then apply the modifier locking in the geometry and add maybe like a solidify modifier with like you know maybe like a thickness of two millimeters so that would give you uh you know kind of a very abstract funky design relatively quickly um, but you know, I know most of you probably won't ever use that, but just trying to spark some ideas of how you could use this, uh, for your 3d print designs. So I'm just going to undo all that and go back to our build modifier. There we go. So that's a couple things, but what else you can do with the build modifier is if you go into, um, edit mode, let's just turn off random just for a second. If you go into edit mode, you can select all of your geometry like here and let's just move it up say up to the the top here and maybe even move it back so that the the chin of Suzanne is right on top of the center point right there on the 3d cursor maybe even a little higher right above it because what we can do is tell our geometry to build from this cursor point so to do that just make sure you have everything selected by a and then you go to mesh inside of edit mode and go to sort elements and elements can be your faces your lines your points and we want to sort them by the cursor distance and then just make sure you have faces i think it's going to default to vertices uh, but you want faces and now when we go into uh, back into object mode it's going to build depending on where that 3d cursor is and it's not a real-time update so if i you know move the 3d cursor over here notice it's still thinks that you know it kind of set an anchor point right there so what you would have to do is go into uh, back into edit mode go back to mesh and say sort 3d cursor or cursor distance and that will 
reset. So now when I go back to object, it will reset. So now, you know, if you wanted it to come from the side, you could do that. Or let's say if we wanted to, you know, stop there. If you wanted like a broken design, you could apply that um, and then add solidify. You could even do it, you can probably do it without applying it. You know, something like that. And now we've got something that's 3D printable. I'll just take that off. So that gives you kind of some ideas. You know, if you wanted to make something look cracked or broken really quickly, then that's, you know, a quick way to do that. Another way I was thinking of using this design is um, let's put our cursor back in the world origin right here at the bottom. So just shift S1. There we go. And we'll go to edit mode and let's put our mesh, kind of reset the, the sorting to the cursor distance down here. So now uh, it will build from the bottom. And so it kind of looks um, like it's being 3D printed a little bit, but maybe we need just a little bit more geometry. So you could add, you know, like a subdivision surface and maybe, you know, bring that above, crank it up a little bit. Make sure you have your subdivision surface up at the top and you could increase it um, maybe to three and we could apply that you know, and that will look a little bit more 3D printed, but still not that uh, 3D printed, but it could give the illusion of, you know, kind of how the printer would be processing it. So let's go ahead and get rid of the subdivision surface here. So another cool thing you can do, let's say if we go into edit mode, we can select, uh, you know, some of the different materials. Just hold shift and hit, or just hit L over the eyes right here. And we can add a material to the eyes so make sure you still have one material on Suzanne and then create another material we'll say new and we can just call this eyes and assign it to the eyes Bloop. and now the eyes are a different material so now if we sort our um, geometry by material the build tool will actually look for all the different materials that you have um, and build them in that order. So it'll build the red ones first and then it will build the eyes. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to object mode and notice it's gonna build the head in red and then it's gonna build the white eyeballs. So that's something too, if you want to have like a, uh, you know, some part that you're designing uh, that you have like maybe four or five, six different pieces and you want it to build in different pieces and then send an animation uh, over to a client. That is one way you could use it. But yeah, so that is kind of the main ways that you can use the build modifier uh, to create, you know, shattered geometry, um, creating uh, build animations from certain uh, 3D cursor points or by materials. And you can get as creative as you want. You can also compound it with other uh, modifiers. But for now, that is just kind of the basics. So hopefully that inspires some ideas of how to use the build modifier. And let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson.